you. Absolutely huge pleasure to be here. It's great to see such a, a, a packed space, packed uh, room. So, yeah, just for the Sherlock Holmes fans amongst you, let's slay one particular elephant in the room. <laughs> it is Professor Moriarty, quite what Conan Doyle had took, why he took again the name, sir, the surname Moriarty, I don't know, but let's leave that to one side. Another elephant will appear soon enough. So, I'm going to tell you about my love-hate relationship between online communication, engaging with the public via YouTube, um, education, edutainment. I'm actually going to revisit some of the, the, the topics we had in the, the very first talk from Nigel. You'll notice that the only person without a Twitter feed up here, or you might have noticed, maybe you didn't, maybe I'm just being too egotistical, but the only person up here without a, a Twitter feed is me. Um, and that's, I'm going to tell you about, as I say, my qualms about online um, connections and online communication. It's not so much that, you know, the Luddite in me is stopping me connecting with um, Twitter. It's just that being Irish, 140 characters? <laughs> it's not going to happen. Right, so, this guy up in the, the top, uh, well, over here, is a guy called Brady Harron. This guy is remarkably talented. He was a BBC, well, he started off in his homeland in Australia working for the Murdoch Empire, but we'll forgive him that. Then he moved to Britain, became a BBC journalist. Then about six, seven years ago, he um, cut loose from the BBC and became an independent filmmaker. He collaborates, interacts, works alongside very many academics in Nottingham. I'm going to tell you about sort of or journey with Brady in terms of something called 60 Symbols. Now 60 Symbols is a YouTube channel that myself and quite a few of my colleagues contribute to, which is a collaboration between School of Physics and Astronomy at Nottingham and Brady. And what we aim to do, sometimes more successfully than the others, particularly in terms of my contributions, is to try and communicate science to an audience like you to as broad an audience as possible. And we know from email comments we've had, we know from tweets, we know from actually talking to people, um, that the um, age range goes from about five year old up to 75, 85 and beyond. We've had some, some emails from people who are right at the top end. Um, it's been reasonably successful. We've got, um, as you can see there, uh, that's a couple of weeks ago, off the order of 350, 360,000 subscribers. The videos, the, off which there are not 60, there are actually about 240, have been watched um, off order 25 million times. And it, it goes up quite well. So we're, we're, we're quite happy with that. Engaging the public, trying to put across science to enthuse you about science. But um, as I say, I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with it. In fact, I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with the entire concept of TED as well. But let me stick with the good side um, for a little while. So that was 60 symbols. We're quite proud, but we're nowhere near the biggest out there. This is a uh, site, a YouTube channel called Minute Physics. Notice this. Let's get that number um, up a little bit larger up the top. 2.25 million subscribers. That was a couple of weeks ago. It's probably closer to 2.5 million now. How many of you are familiar with Minute Physics? Just a show of hands. A few. I thought, I thought this was full of geeks. I thought this audience was full of geeks. <laughs> go, and, go and look at Minute Physics. But that's remarkable. You know, in terms of public engagement, and getting out there, outreach, connecting with, you know, the, the, the people who are interested in science, you know, how many schools visits is that? How many talks like that is this? It's, it's just remarkable that we can connect at this level. And again, I minute mean, physics isn't the biggest out there. This is a guy called Michael from a channel called Vsauce. And you can see, I hope, that was again a couple of weeks ago, so that's probably 7 million subscribers. So 7 million people have subscribed to this guy's channel. When he releases a new video, it pops up in their inbox. They might not all watch it, but you know, you only need a very small fraction of 7 million to get a substantial number of views. Sal, Sal Khan, Khan Academy, where well, this is now moving towards sort of beyond entertainment and engaging the public to actually education, or the argument is that it's educating students. And um, again, very, very many hundreds of thousands, millions of subscribers, and um, extremely popu popular channels. So, you know, we talk about geeks. I tell the first year undergraduates I lecture to, to embrace the inner geek. You know, wh why else wouldn't you do that? Um, but, you know, compared to 10, 20 years ago where, you know, geekiness was not quite as celebrated, um, 
it's great. These type of channels have made a huge impact on the, uh, you know, the overall perception of science and scientists, which I'll get to in a second. And what it allows us to do, oh, volume, thank you. It allows us to connect in ways that we just can't in a classroom. So one no thing we've done no here, I'm a huge heavy metal fan, is to connect the heavy metal song, the lyrics, the rhythm, the riff, the sound effects, all of that, to a number of the nature called the Golden Ratio. You can find it online if you're interested. And that's for a channel called Number File. And as you say, it's beyond preaching to the converted. Because the great thing about this is that you might stumble across one of these videos. You might not have any sort of interest in you know, science or mathematics, or you think you don't have an interest in science or mathematics, and you, you, but you're interested in heavy metal, and you stumble across a video like this. So I was delighted. Let's, you can find out all about that in terms of um, the overall maths and music, but let's move on. What I was really interested in and delighted to see are some of the comments under this video. And on the evening news, metalhead students acing exams, cause unknown. Really like this one. I think you just tricked me into liking math, math clever bastards. <laughs> That's it. That's what it's about, to try and connect with these people who may not have thought about maths and science in quite that way, and to put it in a different context and to, to bring them in. The question is, and the whole focus of this talk, is that really education? Where do we draw the line between engagement, entertainment, edutainment, and education? If you're very interested, and this will be the subject of a talk, if I can get a plug in for the Geek Easy event that Christine's invited me to, um, there are actual real, very strong and real links between quantum physics and heavy metal. I could spend the next two hours telling you about that, but I won't. If you come along to the Geek Easy event in, I guess it'll be September, October time. This is what I love about 60 Symbols, and this is what I love particularly about Brady Haran's work, and he and I are of an absolute... Um, convergence in terms of our thoughts on this. What was very interesting in Jim's talk, where's Jim gone? Right? So you had that uh, cartoon of the scientists in the white coats. I've never worn a white coat in my life, ever. Um, you go into a classroom of school children, and I've done this, my children are primary school, and you ask children, you draw me a little picture of what do you think a scientist looks like? White coats! Everywhere! White coats, big bushy hair, lightning bolts, potions, electricity everywhere. <laughs> We don't look like that. And if that's, you know, for some, if the geek inside you will celebrate that, but for some who perhaps would prefer not to be seen as geeks, we've got to get across that, you know, scientists actually are human. We have passions, we have um, interests, which, um, you know, mean that it's not all about just numbers and sort of Mr. Spock type Vulcan lack of emotions. We've got to get away from that. And it just, if, I'm not getting at you, Jim, but time and time again, that's what you see. If there's a cartoon in a broadsheet, it's going to be scientists in a white coat. This was a video that we did a, a few years ago. As you can see, the joy of a breakthrough, a real one. This is actually the notebook. So I'm Irish, so as I mentioned before, so 140 characters is an issue. You do not know how difficult it is for me to get through this without swearing. So, <laughs> yes, it's flipped, and this was in relation to actual um, atomic switches we were playing with on the surface, and this is an, a censored out expletive down here. But what's great about that is it allows you to, you know, you get in the lab. You get to see what it's like. And I love this comment, which I have censored. This is a great comment. Aggravated astronomer, this is quite some time ago. At my uni, uni I'd get my... <coughs> chopped off for having a lab book in that state. They lied. Real scientists are messier than me, even on a bad day. It's allowing you to, allowing that person to say, well, actually, this is what real scientists are like. This is what they do. That's all the good things. That's all the wonderful things. But. What so I want to try and explain over the next 10 minutes or so is. Uh, You're not having 10 minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Over yeah. the next few minutes or so. Right. What That's you might have heard there. What I'd like to explain over the next few minutes or so is why some materials are transparent and others are um, completely Shut okay. up, Philip. Right. What, um, what you missed at the start there is I say, what I'm going to explain over the next 10 minutes or so, and Brady says, uh-uh, you're not in 10 minutes. And that's, that's an issue. Because not everything, particularly not physics, can be compressed into a few minutes. 
because physics is very difficult concepts. So we are trying to pitch this at a particular audience to engage you, to enthuse you, to get you to think more about physics. Not that this is the be-all and end-all. And the vast majority of people won't treat it as the be-all and end-all. But in many cases, what's happening is people want to go, I, I need to understand this. What's the quickest thing I can Google to get me a two-minute fix that I can understand this? And Ted is guilty of this as well. You can fix your life in 15 minutes if you follow these five points. Exactly what you were seeing this morning in terms of um, the, the connection, wanting to get a quick fix. That was more invigorating than 12 years of public school. And of course, that's gratifying. As an educator, you love to see that. I'm watching 60 Simples videos the whole day. Great stuff. I wish school would have been that kind of education. You know, and you think, I used to think, oh, wow, oh, that's great. And you go home with a lovely, warm feeling. And then you, you know, the, another comment you get an awful lot is, I feel really smart now. They watch that, and they come and they say the write a comment. And again, you feel, wow, wonderful. I've made somebody, I've helped somebody feel really smart and maybe helped them understand it. Except any substantial leap in my understanding of physics, my understanding of science, my understanding of maths, has not come when somebody has explained something to me in two minutes and I've gone, oh, I, I thoroughly get it, I feel smart now. It's when I felt stupid, really, really stupid. Because learning, sorry to say this, but learning, getting a really good grasp of a topic, requires pain. It requires as much, no, it requires more effort from the learner than the teacher. It's not a explanation alone is not education. Entertainment is not education. But if I want to get very good scores in my questionnaires and thus enhance my promotion prospects at the University of Nottingham or in any university in this country, what I do is I entertain, I enthuse, I engage, trying to keep the audience um, you know, connected with the material at some level. But the worrisome thing, and this was in the Times Higher Education, um, a couple of, oh, back last year, 30th May. Great lecture, what was it about again? The enthusiasm of the lecturer in their study makes no difference at all to whether they grasp the material. It's about connecting with the material. My job is to enthuse you. In terms of you actually understanding the stuff or the learner understanding, the stuff, that's over to you. This guy has gone so far, and this is actually from a TEDx talk from New York, which is well worth watching. He's a high school teacher in... New York, Frank Nelshazy, and he's actually gone as far as talking about education via YouTube, online education, as pseudo-teaching. And what he does is he gets the people, as all, we all strive to do this in terms of physics, maths, and science teaching, is to connect with the work, with the, the, the sort of the real world, and get the students, get the students to work out the explanation for themselves. And then it's going to stick then it is going to stick. If you go through all the pain of trying to work out just what is going on here, and you finally get the explanation for yourself, okay, what's some guidance? I'm not saying you, you, you do Nobel Prize winning physics. The teacher has some role in this. But the important thing is what they've done, this is a really nice example, Flappy Bird, many of you will have come across this, where you've got to get the bird through the pipes. What he's done is he's analyzed the acceleration of the bird, worked out does that actually obey real world physics in terms of the acceleration of the bird. But the students have done this themselves. How wonderful. He's posed the question, this is a really tricky game, is it real life physics? And they've come back, um, well, we've actually measured the acceleration, and yeah, it's, it's pretty true to life in terms of the acceleration, at least. KXCD. Um, again, there are some geeks in here, at least, will probably be familiar with this wonderful website, KXCD. But this is, I'm not going to take you through that. You can dig out this cartoon if you, if you like. It's on the web. But not everything can be explained in a five minute or two minute or 10 minute clip. Physics and science in general, some concepts are just plain difficult. You have to put the work in. And we, one of my major qualms is that by saying that we can give you a video which explains some complex piece of physics in two minutes or five minutes or whatever, that's very misleading. That's very misleading because it's saying that the onus is on the, the presenter, the educator, the teacher, to do the work for you. And if you really want deep learning, you need to do the work yourself. So Einstein said very many clever things. This is not one of them. Yeah. If you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. So I asked my children, um, Sears is now eight rather than six, 
And Saoirse is quite an argumentative sod like her father. And um, she said, no, Daddy, that's silly. Maybe you just can't, you might understand it, but you can't find the words. Of course. You may well understand it extremely well and at an extremely deep level, but you can't just explain it to a six-year-old. And the problem is if you reduce these complex concepts down to something that nobody with any background in science can, uh, sorry, somebody with no background in science at all can understand, in many cases, you're losing the essence. So I told you about before those comments which I feel really smart now, and I went, yes. In fact, more recently, what I've actually come to like are comments like this. So this was something on negative temperatures. I don't mean minus 10 degrees Celsius or minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean below absolute zero, which is an interesting concept which I haven't got time to go into. But this is, the, this is exactly what you want. This one makes my head hurt. Okay, so I've snared you in. You've watched it. Your head hurts. Go away and try and you know, tease out online or tease out by looking at, actually maybe even reading a book, um, what's actually going on here. And remarkably, I'm keeping quite to time, which is unusual for me. Where are we next? Okay, just in the last couple of minutes, I mentioned Ted, and I had this love-hate relationship with Ted as well. So you can see what the, what the issues are here. You know, it's great to help you engage, but maybe we're putting across a rather too superficial um, picture of what education is all about. Where it's getting really worrying is actually that that type of grab the sound bite, grab the, the video bite, get the tweet out in 140 characters to explain your work. That's now infecting, and I use the word advisedly, infecting science, where what you need to do is to get, to get past the editors of the top journals. It's not the rigor of your science. It's not the fact that you've spent five years doing this. It's, will this make the front page? Is this going to act as clickbait? Is this going to drag users through to this particular, or viewers through to this particular site? Will the BBC, will CNN pick up on this? That's really dangerous to the extent where our recent Nobel Prize winner is basically boycotting those top journals. Because that's exactly the modus operandi. And they're a business. You can understand why they're doing that. But once you take the commercial aspects into science, and that's driving the actual scientific method and the process, that's really worrying. So this is UCL, a guy called David Calhoun. This is a wonderful um, website uh, called Improbable Science. I thoroughly recommend it. UCL, depressingly, is actually using something called altmetrics to basically assess their staff. How many tweets did your paper pick up? Not what's, the, what, not, you know, what's the rigor of this paper? Is it actually a good sign? Did you actually frame it in a nice user-friendly way so you'll pick up loads of tweets? You all should worry about this because you're funding this. This taxpayer-funded science. This is public science. Okay, and in the last 10 seconds, Ted, you'll see that elephant again. I mentioned elephants in the room. Ted does much the same thing. Of course, there are brilliant talks. Ken Robinson's, for example, talk on education. Go and watch that. That's actually what, the first thing I saw for Ted. It's a wonderful, wonderful talk. But the idea that you know, you're going to change your life by watching a 15-minute video with five key points put across by a very charismatic and a very engaging lecturer, presenter, <laughs> troublesome. Thank you.